Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Aldas and today I've got a very special video. Now, today I am at the 2020 Autosport International Show and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at some of the uh, motorsport Formula 1 stands. Now, I'm going to be here all weekend long. I've come on Friday and I'm going to be here Saturday and Sunday as well. I hope you'll be able to see uh, Charles Leclerc on Sunday, so that'd be pretty cool. Now, today we're just going to be taking a look at the uh, Formula 1 stand behind me, some other motorsport stuff as well. But like I said, I'm going to be doing videos all weekend long. So yeah guys, let's get into it. So guys, let's begin with all the Formula 1 cars that you can see over there. Uh, let's start off with the Williams. Now, arguably not the best car here. Um, certainly in terms of performance, obviously they did not have a great season, but despite, do you know what the amazing thing is? Despite the fact that, you know, you can complain about the aero and their performance, like up close in front, like it just looks like a work of art. And this is the car that finished last. Uh, Score a point though, Robert Kubica, shout out to him, and uh, George Russell, who is a massive talent. This is his car, number, 60, uh, number 63. Now, all of these cars that you'll see here that we'll be talking about, they're kind of a collection of different cars over the years because it's very difficult to get, and I'm not even sure if you're allowed to get the 2019 spec cars here. Uh, so yeah, let's just actually go straight through it. So it will be a bit of a mishmash of, uh, mishmash of some parts uh, from uh, different cars over the years, but this certainly looks uh, almost completely like the 2019 Williams. So yeah, I'm still not a fan of the paintwork. I seriously hope they change that for 2020, but nevertheless, you can't take away from the incredible just the, the incredible engineering that goes into these things now uh, a controversial paint scheme, uh, paint scheme but one i absolutely love the racing point from 2019 this is lance stroll's car of course number 18. Uh, lance stroll himself did not have a good season but i think for racing point considering you know uh, they uh, have new ownership and everything like that i think it's actually a pretty decent season for them the car itself now this is a controversial design because a lot of people kind of hate the pink but I absolutely love it because it's just so unique, so cool. I love the splash of blue from Sports Pacer. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, you can see from the nose, this is actually a, uh, a nose from the early part of the season because they changed to a different nose design uh, after the Belgian Grand Prix or during the Belgian Grand Prix. But yeah, a car that is controversial in some people's eyes, but I absolutely love it. Now, next up, we have the McLaren from this year as well. This is number 55, Carlos Sainz's car. And I must say, what an amazing, like, the color is just absolutely phenomenal. I love this shade of orange. Again, you can see the nose is not the 2019 cars. Uh, it looks more like the 2017 McLaren's nose, but that doesn't take from the fact that it's just such an incredible car. They, McLaren themselves had a fantastic season. That podium for Carlos Sainz in Brazil. The podium that never really was because he never got to uh, go on it, but nevertheless, a great season for McLaren, a fantastic season for Carlos Sainz as well. What a talent he has turned out to be, and hopefully a star of the future as well. But as for the car, I mean, that color is stunning. You can see the mirrors as well, actually. I do think this is a 2017 car. From the mirrors and the shark fin is quite a lot bigger than I thought it would be. So yeah, I think this is a 2017 car with the 2019 paint job. But yeah, beautiful car. Now, the Mercedes. Now, this is a tricky one because I do actually think that most of this is 2019. Lewis Hamilton, of course, six-time world champion, going for seven. Now, at the start of the season, I don't know if a lot of you guys remember, I said that this was my most favorite sort of paint job in Formula 1. This was like my, the best livery of 2019. And do you know what? I kind of stand by it. It is such a good-looking car. Fantastic. The number 44. The one thing I don't like, though, is um, in 2018, if you remember, the number over there was actually in red for Lewis Hamilton and in blue for Valtteri Bottas, and it just made it so much easier to like recognize them because their numbers, like in terms of shape, 44 and 77, can sometimes be a little bit similar. And with the halo, sometimes you can't even see um, the actual driver. And I must say, I really did like that. They had Lewis Hamilton's in red and Valtteri Bottas's number in blue. I really do hope they actually kind of bring that back. That was such a, such a good marker. Uh, the one thing I do want to show you, look at that barge board. Absolutely crazy. The detail on that you can see the amount of work that goes into designing these cars is just phenomenal and of course Mercedes have won every single championship since 2014 Lewis Hamilton as I said six-time world champion going for a seven Valtteri Bottas really having kind of his best season ever so for Mercedes it has certainly been a very good uh, hybrid era now Arguably the bigger news of uh, recent. This is the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. Again, I think it's a mishmash of a few different cars. Uh, you can see, unlike the Mercedes, which has kind of a crazy barge board design, this one has no barge board design. So I think, you know, the front wing does look like it's from 2019. Uh, some of the some of the stuff does not. Those side parts definitely don't look like they're from 2019. But, of course, Max Verstappen just signed a brand new four-year, four-year extension deal at Red Bull. So, this is the car. He better get used to uh, seeing this car, Max Verstappen, because you're going to be in it a lot. 
and hopefully winning championships as well, maybe even as early as this season, it would be incredible. Could you imagine Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, how amazing would it be to see these two go head to head for the 2020 world title? Hopefully a battle we're gonna be, uh, hopefully a battle we're gonna be seeing plenty of in the future as well. But now let's move over to the Renault and the Haas. Now, next up we have the Renault of Daniel Ricciardo, number three. But again, I think this car is from 2018. You can see the front wing, first of all, it's not the 2019 front wing and I'm, I think I can stick the camera a little bit closer. Look at the intricacy of that front wing as well. So yeah, I think this car is the, well, it's the RS19, although I'm pretty sure it's not from 2019. I think this is from 2018, looking at the front wing and at the back as well, or maybe even the 2017 with the Halo. It's all very kind of, it, these cars aren't really that easy, of course. That amazing stick of racing for Antoine Hubert, just noticed that. A brilliant touch as well, of course. Brilliant touch there. Uh, yeah, these cars are kind of Frankenstein a little bit. The shark fin looks like it's from 2017. Halo, of course, came in in 2018. That front wing is definitely not from 2019. Yeah, beautiful. I must say, an absolutely beautiful paint job. And now, finally, we have the Haas of Roman Grosjean. Now, guys, this is a rare sight. Seeing a Roman Grosjean Formula 1 car in one piece. I mean, usually it's got, like, either bits flying off because he's crashed into someone or the car basically in half because he's crashed into the wall. So, yeah, <laughs> joking aside, to be honest, guys, I mean... Don't get me wrong, the whole rich energy thing was a bit of a joke, but I've got to admit, I did love the livery. I'm, I actually didn't like it that much at the start of the season, but the more gold they added, the black and gold, actually, it was really nice. And so let's go actually to the front. Again, it's a bit of a Frankenstein car. It looks like 2018 side pods. And yeah, it's got the 2018 or 2017 front wing as well, because it's not simple. Yeah, maybe I can get a little bit closer. So yeah guys, that's all the Formula 1 cars at the uh, Autosport show, all the modern Formula 1 cars anyway, but now let's go take a look uh, a little bit further into the show at some other motorsport cars as well. Formula 2 car, how cool, even, you know, Formula 1 is obviously amazing, but even Formula 2, like how incredible would it be to drive this car? So yeah, now let's move on and find something else. And then moving on, we've got a McLaren Senna, a race spec. Aston Martin, Martin, I'll get a little bit closer to it. There's just Shmi doing his thing. <laughs> Crazy. Love this thing. So this is a race spec Aston Martin Vantage. And these cars, I mean, they just look, they're just something else. When you look at the carbon diffuser, the spoilers, what they get, what they put on the cars to make them, you know, go into racing, the wider wheel arches as well. I mean, it is just absolutely incredible. I absolutely love this. Let's take a look at the McLaren Senna as well, the orange paint with the blue calipers. You can see on the aerodynamics, blue details there as well. Yeah, brilliant car, an absolute track monster. Not probably the best looking car in the world, but that doesn't matter when you're on track, barely anything can beat this thing. It is absolutely incredible. Stunning car. But yeah, let's move on. Let's take a look at some other stuff. So guys, now let's take a look at some more Formula 1 cars at the Autosport show. So we've moved on to another stand in another room. Now this is actually a bit of a Formula 1 sort of history room where, where you go around basically and it goes from like the modern era all the way back to the inception of, uh, of Formula 1 and some other motorsports as well. So we're going to take a look around as well. Uh, start off with the modern era. Now this is as modern as they have here. It's the 2014 Mercedes now. A really important car, especially to Mercedes. This is where it all started. Lewis Hamilton, number 44. The start of their dominance. A incredible car that... It, it was so dominant. It was such an incredible achievement by Mercedes. All their years of investment and work that they put into those engines. You know, a lot of people think that just happened overnight. And it did not. Mercedes spent hundreds of millions to develop an engine in the back of that thing. And the rest of the car is a masterpiece as well in terms of aerodynamics. But this was the culmination of about five years of investment from uh, Daimler and all the people over there. And boy, did it pay off. And Mercedes, well, they've been doing pretty well recently, haven't they? So yeah, a, a really not the best looking car in Formula 1. I definitely think that the wider cars of the modern era are a lot better. You can see that nose is so high up. Although to be honest, if you remember the noses in 2014, this is probably easily the best car from, uh, the best looking car from 2014. But yeah, a, a definitely an important car for Lewis Hamilton as well. The second world title, the fact that he obviously managed to win a title outside of McLaren was very important. And uh, yeah, not a bad way to start. So guys, and next up we move on to Le Mans. Now this is a 919 tribute now. 
Guys, I do have to admit, I am so bad at knowing other motorsports. I'm not a Formula 1 like elitist, but I just don't watch other motorsports like WRC or WEC or anything, or Formula E even. So I do not know what these cars are, but 919 Tribute, because that's what it says on the fin. A really cool looking car, actually. Uh, now here, I do actually know this one. This is a first gen Formula E car. So all the way back in 2014, the inception of Formula E, how much it's grown since then is actually incredible. And this is a first gen car. Yeah, wow. This is special. This one is very special to me, guys. If you've ever watched my top 10 greatest looking Formula One cars in history, you know that to me, this car is number two. This is the Braun GP car from 2009. Jensen Button, what a story by the way. What a season for Jensen Button, the culmination of his career and an incredible car as well. Of course, Ross Braun saving Honda from the brinks of just death, everyone losing their jobs, not knowing what they're going to do at the start of the 29, uh, 20, 2009 season. And Ross Braun made his own team, and boy, did he have a good season! I mean, I absolutely love this card. Some people hate it because they think it's you know really simple, but I think the white with the fluorescent yellow. I love this design so much. I've been trying to find like some merch to buy from this year, and I just can't find any. So, but yeah, oh my god, I'm in love with this card. This is my second best looking car of all time in Formula 1 to me. Absolutely love it. I can't stop staring at it. I need to move on. Aldas, move on. Stop. Go away from it. I can't. Go away from it. I, I just can't. I love this car too much. I want it. <laughs> so guys, moving on. Next up we have a Audi R10 TDI according to the plaque. Again, I'm so sorry guys. I don't know anything about endurance racing, but I do remember this car. I'll tell you one thing for a, for a start. I actually used to race with this car back in Forza 4. So I do know a little bit about it. I think it's from like 2010, maybe 20, 2009. I think somewhere there. But yeah, that's the only time I ever like knew anything about these cars. So yeah, Forza racing now. This car, again, I don't know too much about it. This isn't the Colin McRae uh, Subaru, but of course Subaru in this colorway, especially if you look with the blue and the yellow, it's so iconic. I think more with, obviously with more with Colin McRae and um, rallying. So yeah, what a legendary car that is. So we have next up an Indy car here. I've, again, I don't know too much about it, guys. So I'm going to move on. This car though, I do know a lot about this car. This is the Williams FW14B, now a very, very famous car. Now, you might notice the haunches just where the suspension is. I don't know if I can get the camera. Now, this is the active suspension car for, for of course, from Nigel Mantle's 1992 season. It's a car that I think Williams actually used for 93 as well, or it might have been 91. I remember they used like the same car in two different years. Uh, so that's the only part that I forget, but what a famous car in Formula 1, one of the most dominant of all time. A absolute monster. I love the livery of this thing. It's it's a bit of a artistic mess to be honest with the white with the blue with the yellow of the camel sponsor back in the day guys when uh, you can have of course uh, cigarette sponsors uh, cigarette sponsors were just the best like of course no smoking but that's the only thing good the good thing about smoking is the cigarette sponsors were always the best again we have a Jaguar XJR9 I don't know too much about it so sorry about that guys but one of the most famous cars in Formula 1 history of course the McLaren MP4-4 driven by both Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost this is the Ayrton Senna car number 12 Another beautiful car, another car that is just, I'm actually salivating over it. It's, it's, I know guys it sounds disgusting, but I just, looking at it is kind of like shocking me. This is the car that Ayrton Senna drove in the 1998 season, one of the most dominant, again, very dominant cars. Actually, if you remember the Braun, the Williams, the McLaren, very dominant cars, but such legendary drivers. And Ayrton Senna undoubtedly is one of the most legendary drivers in Formula 1, taken, again, taken away from us far too soon. How many championships could he have won? Well, sadly we'll never know, but this car's legacy will live on. And what a beautiful car it is, the McLaren MP4-4. Moving on even further into history, this is the Lotus 79, the famous ground effect car. And of course, very relevant actually to modern day because in 2021, ground effect will be making a return. These old cars are just something else, guys. Do you know what? The back of them is absolutely huge. Now, of course, the driver goes there, but if I sort of turn the camera this way, the, all of that is the back of the car. It's crazy. There's so much of it back there. So much massive engine. And the drivers are so close to the front of the car. They're literally by the front wheels, which is almost completely kind of different to how it is nowadays. They're so far back, they can barely see the front wing. This car, of course, the aerodynamics was in its infancy, but you can see there the Venturi tunnels, I think. And like I said, very relevant to 2021 with ground effect, making a comeback. But this was the car that started off. The John Player special livery as well, very iconic. 
Yeah, brilliant car and very important, of course, to modern day. Onto the Lancia Stratos and what a unicorn of a car. I mean, I just look at it and I can't believe someone actually designed it. Smaller at the front, longer, bigger at the back. That's certainly what it looks like. I'm not sure if it 100% is, but definitely looks like it actually. What a beautiful car. I mean, oh my God, incredible. Very successful in rallying, of course. Just brilliant. Uh, next up, we have the Porsche 917, a Le Mans car with the famous, I think, Golf livery. Love that, such a cool livery. Uh, moving on to the Lotus 49. Now this is, I think, almost the start of uh, the liveries in Formula One because you can see there, what is it, Gold Leaf, I think, the cigarette sponsor. Like I said, cigarette sponsors are just something else in Formula One. Always have the best liveries back in the day. And this was just in an era where liveries and sponsorship kind of began. So liveries were start to be a real thing. And again, look at that exposed engine, massive tires. I mean, those are some fat tires. And you can see just why it was so dangerous. Look at that engine. You could just, you could almost touch it. And it's crazy that they were racing in these things. Barely any protection. It looks like you could just punch through it. I mean, they were some serious, <laughs> they had some serious courage back in those days. But yeah, let's move and look on the next one. So again, this one, I'm not sure if it's a Formula One car. I don't think it is. It's a Lola T92. I'm not sure it's, oh, it's an Indy 500 car, if I read. Again, very uh, kind of similar to Formula One, but a lot less, obviously with less aerodynamics because it's more to do with just acceleration and top speed, of course. Now, Lotus Cortina now, a really successful car back in the day of rally cross. Such a cool car to be honest, like so classic. Now, even further back into history, this is a Cooper T51. These old cars are just, they're just something else. Like, you're just never gonna see any cars like this again. Look, now this is a Maserati 250F. I wonder if this is the Juan Manuel Fangio car, actually. I'm not sure, and I'll have to read it, but again, we're just never gonna see cars like this ever again. The wire wheels, the exhaust, that is, in, that is insane. I mean, when you look at the exhaust, the driver sits there. The hot exhaust is right next to him, shooting out the back, and look at the red paintwork as well. Absolutely gorgeous. The Maserati 250F. Again, I'll have to read, I think this might be the Juan Manuel Fangio Championship car. Gorgeous. And then finally we have the Jaguar C-Type. Now, this is as far as the history goes, and again, I don't know too much about it, but there's just something about looking at these old cars that just makes you love them so much that they're never gonna build cars like this again. Look at the size of that steering wheel. It's almost as big as the rims. The wooden interior as well, so special. But of course, built for racing. Guys, that's it from me from day one of the Autosport International show. I'm going to be back both Saturday and Sunday and there is plenty of videos still left so I cannot wait. But yeah, I am so tired. I'm going to go back to the hotel now and just sleep and eat because it is, you know what, there is so much walking. It just reminds me of Silverstone, just walking all the time, all the time, all the time. Uh, so yeah, I am absolutely tired but I can always come back tomorrow because there is just so much stuff to look at. Uh, but yeah guys, that's it. that is when I'll see you again. So yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.